Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want, music. I'm Andy from Two Round Ramens and I hope you're ready to check out this small little thing from the always lovely Seat Lombard. So in the beginning of August, I visited Patch Point in Berlin with the intent of checking out the Sidrax, Tatrax, the Deerhorn and Benjoblin, or rather Peterlin, which is a Seat Lombard take on Rob's Benjoblin circuit. Now, I must admit, I wasn't too keen on it when it first came out. Although I, I was super excited for an affordable Seat Lombard instrument, and when I joined in on the Heimbach premiere where this instrument was showcased, I wasn't that impressed. Even though I knew what banjoing was, I still find it to sound rather too aggressive for my style, and I basically threw it into the category, well, it's just not for me. However, Something did stick with me from that Heimbach video back in the day. It was his take that Peter Lin is a box of inspiration. And his words kind of rang rather true when I tested it at patch point. Even though the sound it made were rather violent and aggressive, it still had that unique Seat Lombard tone to it. I ran audio through it and was immediately convinced this is an amazing small piece of equipment. So let's see what's so special about this. Now Rob's Bangelin is an instrument that's deeply rooted in the whole chaos theory. And I'll link a really nice article from Perfect Circuit down in the description below if you want to learn more about it. However, just for the sake of this video, the point of a banjolin is that with its two oscillators, a resonant filter and a rather chaotic voltage generator, it gives users way of interacting with its wild-like output, thus creating a rather inspiring piece of equipment that is at most times quite untamable. And I won't go into how Peter Lin differs from the original Banjo Lin, and I won't dare to touch upon the whole naming drama that happened, but I will rather try to explain a bit how I use it and how you can get some special use out of it. First and foremost, it's important to understand that what we have here is a wild and untamable animal. Your control is fairly limited, but it does give you a few knobs and a few inputs and output points for all your patching needs. So Peter Lin is made out of two oscillators that are here. It's made out of its own wrangler section that's here. It's made out of the filter section that has here, so resonance and the cutoff. And I'm assuming that these two are mostly for wrangling out the filter outputs. When it comes to the inputs, it only has three banana patch jacks. So you have your inputs for CV on the oscillator number one, your inputs for the CV on the oscillator number two, and then you have your CV for the, for the filter and you have your square waves that go out of each oscillator, your triangle waves, your filter out that I believe is the same one that's coming out of this TRS connection, and then you have a wrangler out that's going out over here. You also have a crown which you can basically need if you want to connect it to your other Seat Lombard or banana gear, or you can use this in a special thing that I'm gonna showcase a bit later. So I've mentioned how this is not a tameable instrument and I kind of love love it for it. Within a rather similar vein than let's say plum butter and coca quantas, it really surprises you and I feel as your job is to find the sweet spots, whichever this may be. By somehow understanding the landscape, you're able to manipulate the inner workings just enough for it to create a rather lovely texture, for example, or a melody. And the kicker is that if you leave it 
for a while, it will kind of slowly shift into another scene. Basically, it's a game of chance and probably the best practice should be that you look at it as a game of chance. Explore as much as you can, find the sweet spots, have fun and most importantly, remember to record the interesting parts because there's quite a big chance that you're not going to get the same result the second time you hook this up. It's a small box of wonders. And like I mentioned before, uh, this thing can quite easily create something that sounds quite aggressive. Yeah, it sounds chaotic. It sounds quite violent. It can also sound sweet at times. If you leave it, like, I, I call this the bird song way of doing it. Because you're mostly searching for those bleeps. Although, if you're into techno or any other sort of darker synth vibes, you can get. Quite, quite messy, messy tones with that. Of course, you can use your normal patch cables, for example. You can, let's say, take these square outs and put them into the CVs of the oscillators or the triangle out into the CV of oscillators. And have them interact in a very, very peculiar way. Let's try something else as well. And by doing this, you can also kind of stop them so it's more of a drone tone than anything. And of course, um, I don't really know what I'm doing, but that's the that's part of it. So yeah. So let's say that's a melody of sorts. You can get quite easily lost with it. And for those that kind of follow me and say, you know, Jesus, man, like your music at times sounds so sweet and kind of innocent. So, you know, I'm surprised that you would take this, that you would go for such a violent, chaotic thing. So, yeah, that was my, my thing initially when I saw it. However, there's a few ways in how to make this thing a bit more, dare I say, tameable or a bit more musical at sorts. And this is, has to do with uh, slowing things down. So one of my favorite things to do is basically taking the ground and putting them into 
the oscillator CVs. Now if I open it up and move this, you can hear the speed of this oscillator, right? However, this is the true speed. Putting ground in it basically slows things down and makes stuff I'm gonna try to find We're gonna try to slow things really down. And now you can see that it's far more tameable. So it, that's kinda weird because it goes from you know from rather really violent sounds to certainly sweet sounds. And it's almost like a string sound. So it can be very quiet. And just like, it's like, and now we search for the sweet spots. And try to patch, you know, like I know what these things are, right? I know, I know what the outputs are. I know what the inputs are. I know what these knobs do. But at the same time, if I patch it a certain way, it has a mind of its own. And I love that. <laughs> I love the kind of the game of chance, like I said. And now we have like water bubbling. So yeah, this is how you basically create two different worlds on, on the Peterlin. You can start with an aggressive way and do stuff with that, but you can also go into the sweeter, unpredictable, bird song, bubbly type ways. <laughs> so where are we going now? And here's a pro tip, try disconnecting some banana. <laughs> and find the sweet spot. So anyways, this was mostly what you can do with it. And there's so much more, it's just like, the thing with this thing is that you know, open it up or, you know, hook it on to something uh, and you might find something that you really like. You might find something that you absolutely hate. <laughs> but the fun part is that you're never going to know. So it's unpredictable, but at the same time, it can be such a great thing. Now, one of the things that I like the most about it is treating this as a, as a uh, effect unit of sorts. So let's try to see that now. So yeah, what I have here is Fall, the script from Ambalak, that's gonna go into the Seattle part. So what basically I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the North Shield as a sound source that's gonna go through the Seattle part as an effect unit. But before we do that, you might have noticed that 
uh, if I go to the parameters, my outputs are down. Now, why? Because I want to showcase something. So let's say, for example, if we open up we can hear basically we can hear the oscillators doing their stuff now if i plug this in here i can still hear it a bit but not by much and mostly you know i can hear it if i really boost up the frequencies here so now that we have let's say these oscillators rather quite heavily attenuated or rather cut down we can do a lot of stuff so firstly what we can do is we can slow down the filter and take the filter out so it goes back to the filter in and now It's very quiet, but I want to find the sweet spots. Why? Because at the same time, I want to find the noise. I want to find something that inspires me. And I really like noise. And as you can hear now, we kind of slow down each of these. And this is quite different from the ones that we have tried before. And this is another map of Peterlin that I think it's rather unique. It's the slow tone of noise. And that's very pretty, at least for me find it rather inspiring. So yeah, of course you can boost this up and put it on the lot of Reaper and just have it something mangled out. It kind of reminds me of the quantum dust things on the plum butter. But let's, for the sake of it, Try pushing in the fall. Sounds absolutely lovely. And I'm gonna let you listen to it for a minute.
So yeah, there you go. A little video on this little amazing small device. If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment down below. I will post a few more videos covering this device in, in the description. So if you need a bit more Peter Lin action, there's an abundance of links there. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. You can like the video. If you want to support me directly, buy my stuff from Bandcamp. And most importantly though, I do wish you a pleasant rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, whenever you might be watching. And see you next time.